this right here is a D15 engine and uh, you know the D15 engines are known to fail for many different reasons in my channel you want to see different fails and content about these engines and specific fails that these engines have over the time but in this case this video is going to be a little different so um, this engine right here had the problem a crankshaft problem the crankshaft um, uh, was damaged because of low lubrication so engine has to come out and be repaired and after it was repaired we put this engine back and the truck went to work after a couple days the engine started making a loud noise as you can hear it you don't hear it right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was the noise that this uh, uh, engine was making. And um, uh, it's very unusual after a repair. So the only option, the only thing to do in this case is to remove the engine. I mean, there is nothing to do, so once the engine was removed, of course, we have the problem. Cylinder number two, connecting rod, bearing was damaged after repair. What happened here? That is the question. What happened to this engine? Then after the repair was done, the engine got damaged. So the connecting rod bearing got totally damaged so there is no way to discover a damage a, a, a problem with it because it, it is completely destroyed so it is welded to the crankshaft uh, it is no there is no way to know if the connecting rod bearing just didn't have lubrication if the connecting rod bearing um, was in, wasn't installed properly so many different factors then we cannot uh, I cannot say when you are installing the pistons most of the time the bearings are the are the last thing we pay attention to because when we're starting the pistons and the connecting rods together we pay attention to the piston rings so the location of the piston rings is very important but it's also important the location of the connecting rod bearing what I believe then happened, I have no the evidence exactly to claim this uh, a theory, is then when the piston was dropped inside the combustion chamber or the cylinder liner, it went down, and when this one went down, it didn't actually sit properly on the crankshaft. Probably slipped to the side, left to the left, or it wasn't exactly on the position where it's supposed to be, anything. Of course, then when you install the connecting rod cap and you torque this to a specification, you are going to push this bearing all the way as it's supposed to be. Of course, if this one is not properly mounted, it's going to work for a moment, but eventually it's going to get damaged, just as this engine did. Of course, right, uh, there is no way to know it except if you actually rotate the engine. You have to rotate the engine many times to see if there is any type of hard rotation, specific spots, then you feel that the engine is not rotated properly. But in some cases, the engine is rotated pretty smooth because of the um, dislocation of the bearing. It is so minimal that it doesn't affect the rotation of the engine. But eventually, when the engine starts running, because we are going to be rotating the engine probably like one RPM every minute, so it's going to take so much time to rotate the engine. And the engine itself is going to work 600 RPM every minute. So that means 600 rotations per minute. And we're just going to do one rotation per minute, so that is going to be a big difference. Now, um, in this case, there is no much to do, too much to discuss, but just say then it was our fault right here. This engine got damaged because it was destroyed, but the labor was the reason why 
wasn't done properly. What happened next? Warranty. So this engine has to come out again, as I said before, and crunches have to be replaced. Connecting rod number two has to be replaced as well as warranty. Customer doesn't have to pay anything because, of course, it's not his fault. He already paid over $20,000 for an engine and now there is a fail. We have to cover that. So engine got out, replacing the crankshaft, replacing the bearings again. Don't reuse the bearings. If this happens to you for any reason, hopefully it doesn't happen to you. But if it happens to you, don't reuse any bearings. New bearings, new connecting rod, specifically the one that got damaged. If you want to replace the other ones, well, that is optional. But if the one that is damaged is not replaced, then you're gonna have the same problem. So replacing the, the one connecting rod that got damaged, replacing the bear, the, all the bearings, connecting rods and main bearings, replacing the crankshaft, replacing the bolts, all the bolts again, because now this one got damaged because of the heat and the torsion because the engine wasn't rotating properly. So they got damaged. So new bolts and new seals, new oil cooler, very important, new oil cooler. Don't install the same oil cooler. If this happens to you, then as I say again, if you just did your engine, if you are a mechanic, you did your engine. I mean, anybody's engine, you got paid to do the engine. And for any reason, the engine got damaged. Well, it happens, so don't be, don't be scared. Just do what is right. Then is take care of the responsibility of remove the engine and repair it again. Sadly, that it happens. It happens to brand new parts. So it will happen to everybody. So it is just to be careful. Now, um, do not reuse the oil cooler because the oil cooler is the one then is in charge to uh, to cool the 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 oil cooler is the one in charge to cool the oil. But inside the self of the oil cooler, they're, they're too little, they're too tiny. So all the metal, all the debris, then the pump was pushing is going to be collected there. So you have to remove that oil cooler and install a new one. New oil filters is mandatory. There is no way you want to reuse the oil filter after a damage. It doesn't matter if the engine just ran for a couple minutes or the engine run just for a couple seconds. It doesn't matter. Once the debris start getting released to the oil, to the lubrication system, all that has to be replaced with new. The oil filter, oil, oil cooler. Because all those debris are going to be trapped in there. And if you don't take care of that, that is going to go back to the same location that is the bearings, and this is going to get damaged again. And after that, after putting all together, of course, we have to put the engine together and start the engine. That will be the most important part of the process. And um, in this case, uh, we know then uh, it was a it was a mistake, but we corrected the mistake. And now this engine is back together. Uh, we have to do uh, whatever other tests that we have to do. We have to test the engine before releasing it. Uh, we have to leave it running. If you wonder what is the best way to test the engine before taking it to the road, it is doing a regeneration. You can use a computer, DDL software, or anything that you have to force a region on your engine before releasing the truck to the highways because over here, meanwhile the engine is right here, something happens, we can hear it immediately, we can see something is leaking, something is broken, something is making a different noise, something is happening to the engine, we can immediately shut the engine off. But when you are cruising, driving the truck, there is so much noise around, there is so many different things, there are many factors. Then by the time you realize that there is something happening to the engine, it will be completely destroyed. That is a very important factor that you have to pay attention to. But as I say, uh, this engine is ready again. This is totally warranty. Owner doesn't have to pay anything because of a mistake. And um, now uh, we have to inspect the engine very well and uh, hopefully this doesn't happen again. 
But if it happens, well, we have to fix it. We have to correct the problem. This is the way it is. We don't uh, do things the perfect way all the time. We always make mistakes, but we try to make the less, the, the as little mistakes we can because that will actually increase profit in my area and the owner of the truck. So both are going to get profit because the truck now is sitting for a couple of days. So he is not getting any money out of this truck. So that's understandable. He can be mad. He can be uh, very upset about it. And that is completely understandable because the truck was here for a couple of days and now has to be more time here. That is not the way it's supposed to be. So. Be careful when you are performing your job, if you are a mechanic, or if you are a person that is just trying to save money by seeing these videos, just be careful. Because by doing a job, then you think you can do because you are watching videos or because you think that you have the experience to do it, you can destroy your engine too. So just be careful when you are performing any type of task, repairing your engines or repairing anything around the truck because that could save money or that could be the reason why you want to spend so much money. That's just my advice. So up to right now, this is everything. And if I have any more videos like this on how to take care of warranties, of course I want to post them because it is not just about winning. It is actually too showing how it's like to repair problems too. Problems that are caused by, 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 by ourselves. So these problems can be in many different ways, but we have to take care of the problems in the end. and it's very important as well to find the cause of the problem. So that way next time we don't make the same mistake. So if you like this video, just hit the like button and share it. If anybody wants to know about this, um, subscribe to the channel is very important. Go to, the, to go to Instagram, look for me, Francisco Maya YouTube, check the description of the video, how to do this, how to send support to the channel, and thank you for watching.